the second book of Chronicles. And we're in chapter number 20, and we're going to commence to read from verse number 1. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse number 1. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea, on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazes on Tamar, which is, his, which is an Engadi. And Jehoshaphat feared, and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art, thou not, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel? and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever. And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now, Behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt not thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judas stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Gehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, and the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them, Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zizan. Ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat, bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, 
The Lord set ambushes against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. And the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one had to destroy one another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the, unto the multitude, and behold, there they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka, for they were blessed, for there they blessed the Lord. And therefore, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Baraka unto this day. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. Here in Second Chronicles chapter number 20, and the portion of Scripture that we have just read to get together, I want you to notice, first of all, just by the way of introduction, that a number of what I call great peas have have sprouted up within the very passage that we have read together. For instance, when we come to verse number one and two, we identify the first great P that sprouts up this morning. And we identify that this morning as, as the great problem. Because in verse one and verse two of, of Second Chronicles chapter 20, a great problem has arisen. An enemy has appeared. An enemy has appeared on the horizon, a great multitude. Moab and Ammon and others have arrived on the horizon to declare war and to invade, to invade Judah. And as they behold the situation, and as they look to the horizon, and as they see the Ammonites and the Moabites and others with them arriving and lining up in the horizon to invade and to make war on Judah, the situation looks very bleak indeed. In fact, through the eyes of flesh, defeat is sure. Throughout the eyes of flesh, victory seems impossible. And in verse number 3, we see Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat feared. Wonder, could this be you this morning, child of God? I don't know. But on the horizon of your life, suddenly an enemy has appeared. Something has stepped onto, or perhaps will soon step onto the horizon of your life that will cause you, and perhaps maybe this morning has started to cause you to have great fear. The enemy in some way has appeared. And life, perhaps, in the horizon looks to be anything but good. And child of God, listen to me, it doesn't matter how spiritual you may be, it doesn't matter how well you know your Bible, it doesn't matter how near to God you are this morning, the devil and the enemy will soon arrive on the horizon. Wonder has something stepped onto the horizon of your life. It's causing you to fear this morning. Maybe sickness. Maybe sorrow. In some way, child of God, the enemy has appeared. 
And I want you to notice God wants you to see something this morning. The enemy arrived on the scene to invade and to destroy Judah. I want you to take the name Judah. Away back in Genesis chapter 29 and verse 35, you remember Leah. Leah gave birth to Judah. And this was Leah's song after she, she gave birth to Judah. She says, Now will I praise the Lord. The name Judah means to praise. That's what Judah means. It means to praise. And the enemy this morning, child of God, seeks to invade all of our lives. He seeks to invade my life. He, in, he seeks to invade Tracy's life. He seeks to invade your life. He seeks to invade my life for the sole purpose to destroy our Judah. What do you mean, George, by destroying our Judah? What the enemy wants to do this morning is to destroy and to rob us of every reason that we should bring praise to God. I wonder this morning, are you finding it difficult to praise God? Are you finding it difficult this morning to rejoice in Him? Are you finding it difficult this morning because of what you're facing, because of what you're going through, you're finding it difficult this morning to sing. Listen to what the psalmist says in Psalm 92, verse 1. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Isaiah 42 and verse 12 says, Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare His praise in the island. You know, one thing the devil hates this morning, one thing the enemy hates, is when God's people is able to praise Him in their pain. Nothing frustrates the enemy more when we can worship God and praise God. I wonder this morning what way has the enemy appeared in your life? What way this morning has the enemy lined up against you this morning? What way is he approaching this morning to destroy and to rob you of your note of praise? You say, I want you to notice a great problem. Then there's a great proclamation because it says in verse number 3, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Notice something here, friends, this morning. Jehoshaphat takes the enemy seriously. One of the greatest mistakes we can do as Christians is not to take the enemy seriously. Paul could say we are not ignorant of his devices. And because we see Jehoshaphat this morning setting himself against the Lord, he says in verse 12, O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against them. I'll tell you, Jehoshaphat took the enemy seriously. And child of God, we are no match for the enemy. In spite of the great anim or in spite of the great army that Jehoshaphat had on his side, he could see he was inadequate in the light of the enemy that faced him. A great problem, a great proclamation. I'll tell you something else you'll notice. From verse 3 through to verse 13, a great prayer. I'm telling you something now, child of God, that's what we need to be doing today for our nation. I see all this nonsense that people's putting up on Facebook, and some of it's coming from Christians, posting up photographs with, of, uh, of Theresa May with an orange collar at and all, and some of the Christians are doing it. If they would get down on their knees and pray more, They'll do them the world of good. 
and some of the tripe that some of the Christians are putting up as a disgrace. Oh no, the day has come when they do proclaim a fast and prayer. And you listen to the prayer this morning of Jehoshaphat, you'll notice that here's a man this morning who had a knowledge of God. That's what believers need today. We need a knowledge of God. Oh, believer, have you a knowledge of God this morning? That's what we're lacking in, a knowledge of God. I hear men saying the day, they're quoting, uh, John MacArthur says this, John MacArthur says that, John MacArthur says the other thing, Warren Wesbury says this, Warren Wesbury says that, Warren Wesbury says the other thing. Ah, oh, but what does God say? That's the thing. Jehoshaphat sat himself down to seek the Lord, and he had a real grip of God. He had a real knowledge of God. You know what Hosea 4 and verse 6 says? You know what God says in Hosea 4 and 6? He says, my people, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Oh, child of God, it's a knowledge of God we need. Verse number 6, he knows the sovereignty and the, omnip the omnipotence of God. Verse number 7, he sees the faithfulness of God. Verse number 8 to 9, he sees that he knows the promises of God, of God to hear in affliction. Friend, he knows God. What does Daniel eleven thirty two 32 says? The people that do know their God shall do exploits. Ah, but then there's the promise, verse 14 to verse 18. The promise comes, listen, this is not your fate. God will give you the victory. But it's not the great promise. And it's not the great prayer. It's not the great proclamation. It's not the great problem. God wants to speak to us tonight, this morning, about it's about the great praise that's here. The great praise. We all talk about prayer, yes, but we need to learn a wee bit more about praise. My text this morning that the Lord has led me to, 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 22, and when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Singing in the face of the enemy. Are you able to sing in the face of the enemy this morning? I want you to notice, first of all, in that verse this morning, there's something wonderful. There's the wonderful worship that was presented. Look what it says. And when they began to sing and to praise. Verse number 21 teaches us the truth that saturated their praise. It says, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers. In the Hebrew, that means praisers unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of holiness. Do you know what they were to praise, child of God? They were to praise the character of God. They weren't to praise as to what God has done. They weren't to praise as to what God was going to do. They were to praise as to who God is. You know, child of God, sometimes, and I'm as guilty as the next person, so easy just to lose focus as to who God is this morning. The theme of their praise was the character of God, the beauty of holiness. Do you see when the winds and the waves of adversity And troubles appear. 
overwhelmed situation seems to come crashing all down around you. And you say nothing as to what to praise God for. God doesn't want you to drop your head. God wants you to lift your heart. God wants you to lift your face. He wants you to lift your voice and to praise Him as to who He really is. Psalm 29, 2, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Psalm 90, verse 17, Let the beauty of the Lord be upon us. Listen, child of God, when the enemy comes, listen, let the beauty of the Lord be upon us. Whatever we face this morning, child of God, whatever way the attack comes, here's the call from heaven this morning. Let the beauty of the Lord be upon us. When the enemy comes and life is crumbling around you and you don't know how to sing and you don't know what to sing about, listen, let the beauty of the Lord be upon us this morning. Let me say this this morning, as we stand in the face of Satan, as we stand in the face of Satan, let the beauty of the Lord be upon us. Never lose the beauty of the Lord. No matter what we're called a face, child of God, never lose the beauty of the Lord. No matter what we're going through in life, don't ever lose the beauty of the Lord. Notice the truth that saturated their praise. Notice the timing that they sounded their praise. It says, and when they began to sing and to praise. I want you to notice something, friend, as, as Judah goes out now to meet the enemy. Notice it's the choir that goes out first. Notice this morning it's the choir that goes out first. The enemy was met with singing. The enemy was met with praise unto God. And you know, child of God, that's how we ought to meet the enemy every day, with singing and with praise unto our God. Listen, nothing makes Satan more miserable when we can sing and praise the Lord, when we can praise God in our pain when we can praise God in our battles, when we can praise God in our struggles, when we can praise God in the face of the enemy. Eighteen months ago, a lady lost her only son. He was 42 years old. It was the only son she had. Her husband died 17 years prior to this. Herself, she was partially an invalid. She says the grief was unbearable. The sorrow was almost unconquerable. And one day, life for her was so dark, she didn't know where to turn. This woman was a believer. And her husband was a, or her son was a believer. And her son was a great fan of a gospel group called Greater Vision. She lifted one of the son's CDs out. and placed it into the CD player and pushed the button to play. 
At the start, she didn't know whether she'd be able to bear to listen to it or not, but when she listened to it, she was glad that she played it. The first track that played that afternoon as she sat alone, the lyrics of the song went like this. God wants to hear you sing. When the waves are crashing round you, when the fiery darts surround you, when despair is all you see, God wants to hear your voice when the wisest man has spoken and says your circumstance is as hopeless as can be. That's when God wants to hear you sing. The wonderful worship that was presented. Look at the verse again. We have the wonderful work that was performed. It says, and when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Aunt Mount Seir, which came against Judah. You know what all this proves this morning? We all talk about the great weapon of prayer. Prayer is a great weapon. The devil trembles when he sees even the weakest saint die upon their knees. But let me tell you something else. Praise is a great weapon. The moment praise began Then God began to move. You see, here's a people this morning who, who were against a great multitude, against a great enemy. And child of God, I don't know perhaps at this very moment what's against you. I don't know. It seems perhaps at this moment unconquerable. Maybe at this very moment you're facing nothing, but let me tell you, before this day next week, you can be facing some, something. Something might step into your life that could drive you into despair. And don't rule it out, child of God. But when Jehoshaphat friend got down on their knees and they sought God and they prayed and God gave them the promise, they went forth into battle in praise. And it's when they lifted their voice in praise, then, friend, God moved. Do you know what truly praising God requires? Truly praising God requires us this morning to concentrate on God's character. To truly praise God is for you and me to fully concentrate on God's character and forget what's causing us to fear. Let me repeat that. Truly praising God this morning requires you and I to concentrate on God's character and forget what's causing us to fear. Maybe you can't find God this morning. Maybe you cannot see God in your struggles. Has the enemy appeared? Is he causing you great alarm? Does he threaten you? You know more about tears than you do of praise? God says to you this morning, listen, focus 
on me. Be still and know that I am God. Do you know what that really means in the original? It means let go of everything and just know that God is God and trust Him. So what do you need to do this morning? Through praise, through praise is the means that God often uses to shut the mouth of the enemy. Maybe this morning at your workplace, when you sing in the face of the enemy, it sings the devil's defeat. Notice the front-line troops, the front-line line troops, the front line, line troops were not swordsmen, they were singers. Notice the front line troops were not chariots, it was a choir. Praise paralyzes the enemy. Whatever you face, child of God, this morning, listen to me, whatever is on the horizon and is causing you great alarm and great despair, despair trust God for it, and trust God in it. And I want you to notice the last thing in that verse. There was the wonderful worship that was presented, the wonderful work that was performed, the wonderful wind that was powerful, and they were smitten. Do you know what God did? God turned their battle into a blessing. God turned what was against them into something for His glory. God doesn't stop the enemy from coming. God doesn't stop the enemy from appearing. God allows the enemy to come. God allows the enemy to appear to teach us lessons and how we should trust Him and how we should praise Him. I have no reason to sing, George. Oh, yes, you have. You take a wee moment and you just think of what the Lord Jesus did for you. And the Lord Jesus won the victory that day. And you learn to sing. You learn to praise. Because when you learn to sing and you learn to praise the Lord for the beauty of holiness, you'll raise up a standard that will say, Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God wants to hear you sing. May God bless His Word to our hearts. Our